looking at how to maximize the power out of a circuit that has an AC source. So if you have a complex circuit, you have to get it into the Thevenin equivalent, which is a AC voltage source, and the Thevenin impedance, which has a real component and the reactive component. And then we're going to take that and we're going to look at how when you connect a load, an impedance load, then what value of the load is going to maximize the power out of that source. So let's get to the calculation for that. So here is our setup and we're going to define some of our terms. First, remember that these are impedances, so they have a real component and a reactive component. So that's the X times J, and we're writing them in the real and imaginary uh, terms here. So those are defined for ZTH, the Thevenin impedance, and the load. The voltage source is also an AC load, so we define that this time as a phaser. And then the things that we're going to be looking at are actually the output power. And that means that we need to look at the output voltage and the output current. So we're defining those here, and here we're going to define them as the magnitude and then the phase for each of those components. All right, so that's our whole setup. Now let's look at the average power. This is the definition for average power. And again, we're using magnitudes of the AC sinusoidal waveforms, not the RMS value. So the little m is the magnitude. And so we need to know the magnitude of the voltage and current that we care about, and also the difference between the phase of the voltage and the phase of the current, so that subtraction. Once we have all those values, then we can calculate the power. Okay, so we're going to derive that equation. Since we want the power at the load, we care about this current and this voltage. So what we need to do is find the values for that. So let's start with the current. This current is defined by, well, we know we have uh, Ohm's law. So V equals, let's start here, V equals I. And since we're in AC, we do Z instead of an R. Then we can find, if we want this IL, we know that we need the voltage VOC, the phaser for that, divided by this ZTH plus ZL. If we look back at our power equation, so here actually we just want the magnitude value. We do want the phase, but actually there's gonna be a trick and we're actually gonna find this difference in a different way. So we can just look for the magnitude of the current phaser through the load. So let's start there. So if we look for the magnitude of this phaser, that's going to be the ILM, then we are just going to get the VOC. This would be, the VOC would be a phaser. So we're going to get the magnitude of that VOCM because we would be dividing these. So when you divide, you divide the magnitudes and then you subtract the angles. But since we're just looking at magnitude, we just divide those magnitudes. Okay. Then we need the magnitude of this ZTH plus ZL. And so we need to break that into the real and the reactive components, which, which would sum. And then we need to take the Pythagorean theorem. We take the hypotenuse value. So what we're gonna get is the square root of, and then we're gonna put the two R's together, RTH plus RL, quantity squared, plus, the reactance value, so RTH plus XL quantity squared, all of that underneath the square root, and in this division. That is the value for our this, what we're going to put in here. Let's look at the voltage value. We're going to try to find this VM here. VM, this magnitude, what we're actually looking at is this, the voltage over the load. We're going to see that now that we have the current, the current times of the impedance here is going to give you the voltage. So we can do using Ohm's law again, VL is just going to be equal to IL times ZL. Okay, again, we want to find the magnitudes. So, oh, because we want to find this is the magnitude, right? So we just need the magnitude of that. So we're gonna focus on 
the magnitude of VL, which we've defined as VLM here. So that's going to be ILM, which we just multiple, we just figured out right here. And then it's going to be the magnitude of ZL. Okay, so let's do each of those in turn. So first, let's just copy down the same equation for the ILM. It's a VOC magnitude divided by, we have this kind of long square root, but let's just write it out, RTH plus RL squared plus XTH plus XL squared. And now we're going to multiply that by the magnitude of ZL, which is just going to be the Pythagorean theorem of these values. So we're going to get RL squared plus XL squared, and then this whole thing is square rooted. Okay, so a little bit ugly again, but we have our base values. And let me kind of circle what we're going to be using here to put into our final form. I'm going to write this here again. So we're going to use these two values here. Now we need this, this guy here. Okay, great. How do we do that? So we could find the individual angles here and then subtract them and take the cosine. Looking at these equations, it's, it would be a little bit of a mess. We can do it, but it's not going to be super pretty. We can do another thing where let's look at just this, this load impedance over here. So if we use again Ohm's law, Let's just write that out. V L equals I L C L. Let's rewrite this with just Z by itself. So we'll get C L equals V L divided by I L. And let's just put that into phasor form real quick. So this is equivalent to the V L M angle theta V mine divided by I L M angle theta i. When we do phasor division, we divide our magnitudes and then subtract our angles. So this ZL, which is also a phasor, is going to be equal to VLM divided by ILM. And then our angles are going to be theta VL, oops, theta V minus theta i here. This angle is what we're looking for. It's the same thing. So since this is also equal to, it has its own angle, it's going to be theta L. Um, let's just rewrite this as, I'm going to erase this real quick, rewrite this in phasor form. So it's BZLM angle theta L. This angle, these angles have to be equal. So theta L is equal to theta V minus theta I. Well, if we look, we know the form of L already, it's up here. And so we can more easily find this angle. And we can jump even further ahead because we can say we're going to take the cosine of this. So if we just draw our triangle here, we have our real components RL, and it's going to be some theta L, and XL here is the magnitude of the vertical part then we can automatically find the cosine of that. I'm going to write it over here a little bit. So I'm going to take the cosine of theta L. And I'm just going to write that it's, we determined that the angles are can be swapped out with each other. They're equivalent. So that's the same as theta V, theta V L minus theta I. So those are equivalent. Then if we take the cosine, it's going to be adjacent. So this RL divided by the hypotenuse, which is going to be RL squared, so we're going to L square root again, plus XL squared. Okay, bam, we have it. So we have our terms for this whole expression. We have our two values there, and we just have a two. Now let's use all these values and put them into the power equation and see what we get. So power is equal to, it's going to get long, but it's going to simplify, I promise. So 
we're going to start with the putting the value of the voltage magnitude here. So we're going to VOCM divided by I do a square root RTH plus RL and the squared plus XTH plus XL quantity squared. So that's the end of our square root here. Okay. And we do have this uh, square root RL squared plus XL. Oh, you guys, I missed the squared here. I'm sorry about that. Squared. Okay. Now we're going to multiply by the next one by this current magnitude. And we're going to be able to multiply and just square this value. Oh, and it turns out the denominator is the same. So we can also square. I'm going to put parentheses so that it's really clear that we're squaring the square root. It will simplify, but we'll do that next in the next step. And then we multiply by the cosine, which is down here. So that's going to give us an RL on the top and a square root of RL squared plus XL squared. Okay. You will see, oops, that's supposed to be the end of the square root, <laughs> a bunch of simplifications. So this whole term will go away, cancel, numerator and denominator. This square root and the square will simplify and just become the value inside the square root. So let's just write that out again. So we have the VOCM squared and RL here on the numerator. And then RTH plus RL squared plus XTH plus XL squared. So this is our simplified term of the power. So if you're given all of the values ahead of time, you can plug them into the here and get the power, the real power going to the load. Now, how do we maximize this value? Well, our x values can be positive or negative. So we, we assume we can't control this x th, that's a set value, but we could control the load. And because we can do positive or negative values, we want to make this whole thing equal to zero. If we make this zero, the denominator will be smaller, which means that our overall power will be larger. So to make that zero, we would want XL to equal negative XTH. Aha. So whatever our reactance value is for the Thevenin impedance, we want the reactance in the load to be the opposite sign but the same magnitude. So that's one way to maximize the value. And the other one is once that's zeroed, you'll actually be left with this equation. We've already done this in maximizing just resistive values for the seven and equivalent. And we find that RL has to be equal exactly to RTH. Because these values are all positive, the resistance can't be negative. So we have to find a positive value. If we put this back into the equation, we see that the ZL needs to be equal to RTH minus a JXTH. And you can also write this as ZL is equal to the conjugate of the ZTH. To summarize, Given this setup for the Thevenin equivalent AC source and a impedance load, we want to find the average power. We go through, we solve for those values, and we plug them in. We get this final form at the bottom here. And from that, we can deduce that in order to maximize the power transferred to the load, we would want the impedance of the load 
to be equal to the real part for the Thevenin equivalent and equal to the negative reactants in order to optimize the load. So you can also think of this as the complex conjugate of the Thevenin equivalent. If you plug in that value into the load, you will maximize the power out of it.